humbling ninjas with 100 of the most underrated builds in Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker. Well, it's probably not a hundred, I didn't count them, but it's a whole lot of different builds, okay? Probably more than your average Kurama Claw user could count to. And it's really outstandingly beautiful gameplay. Well, I guess, I don't know, I didn't watch it through, but I am very picky when it comes to footage, and I wanted to do build videos on all of these for a reason. So I have no doubt that it's gonna be better than 90% that you'll find on YouTube anyways. I am sitting on way too much footage. It's close to 3 terabytes by now. I go out there and record like 40 full-on build videos when I'm trying to get my event rewards together and then before I get any of them out really, I have to cover some new update or there is a new weapon that people want to know how to use. So I just keep bottling up videos and nobody really gets to see them. The footage for this video for example. I just went through some old folders now and picked a couple of random clips I already pre-trimmed a bit. As I said, I didn't even look through them at all. It's also very old footage, you can see it's still my old CAC. I had maybe like 400 hours of playtime at that point. I'm now sitting on well over 2000, but I just had to put this out there because I'm kind of fed up with people trying to tell me that the stuff I literally do on a daily basis wouldn't be possible or is unrealistic or anything. That I wouldn't be able to pull these combos I'm showing in real games or against good players. Like, okay, there are gonna be scenes where it's just some bronze players, but at the same time, if you're going out there, want to clip a specific combo for a video, you don't really care who you can do it on. If the situation is there, it is there. My content was never about me. I'm not here to show off or feel special about my gameplay or anything. For some of the combos I want, you would need somebody with a no sub cooldown or an isolated target so their teammates don't interrupt you, or even just be lucky that your bronze random mates don't ruin your combo with random kunai spam. But there are also gonna be scenes where I show off the stuff against some of the sweatiest, most annoying players in my region. You might recognize some of them if you play in EU, or also other content creators if you know their PSN. So it's not even like I'm only farming breadsticks or anything. I'll take the situations as they come. I'm usually not even trying to win or anything, I'm usually just chilling in solo queue, trying to have some cool fights, do some fancy combos, or get a specific clip I want for a video. So I play more towards that in my own personal gameplay. I don't even really see myself as a player. I have no ego as a player whatsoever. I didn't train myself or anything. I'm the worst player in the world if you want. I do not care. Think what you want. I'm an esports coach slash content creator. I studied competitive gaming. I'm one of the highest qualified people in the entire country on my field. So although a lot of people will see that differently, but as a professional I can very much tell, I'm not even a good player. Not at all, and I never tried to be. Like, compared to the people I'm used to work with in other disciplines, that's absolutely nothing. But it also makes sense. You wouldn't be able to put the same effort into becoming a good player and becoming a good coach. There's just not enough time to do both on the highest level. You focus on either or. Low-key, most of y'all, if you had even a couple months proper training, you'd be way better than I am right now. Sad truth is that 98% of players online are absolutely trash at the game. The average casual gamer is so much better at their game than the average Shinobi Striker player is at Shinobi Striker. Look at League of Legends, look at Apex, Overwatch, Rainbow Six, etc. Things that are absolute basics in other games. Things that you get reported for intentional feeding if you do them wrong. Because they are dead dumb and actually just have to do with a little bit of common sense and have nothing to do with being good in a specific game or anything. Those are the things that I see 90% of players online do wrong in most of their matches constantly. Really basic stuff like not staggering. Yeah, if the teamfight is lost, your teammates are dead, you are on low health, have no sub, no realistic way to get out and regroup with your team, you should just die. Just wipe with the team so you can regroup and re-engage in a 4v4 again with all resources available and not just staying alive for another 10 seconds when we'll die anyways so your whole team is already close to respawn by the time you die and now has to wait for you or fight at a disadvantage in a 3v4 or something. And then also regrouping in general, yeah? If people respawn, instead of waiting for their teammates to be back and try again in a 4v4, they just respawn and run straight away into a 1v4 without even looking where their teammates are. People are not aware of things like positioning in this game. Literally anybody who is taking damage after respawn when teammates are still on their way back into the fight is throwing the match. 
You wouldn't believe how many times I just stood there after respawn, watching the laugh of my teammate still staggering and dying right before my other teammate respawns and immediately runs back in into a 1v4, 2v4 and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, um, how are we supposed to even play like that? Like, the enemies have constant mad advantage, we are outnumbered the whole time. Doesn't anybody realize the problem here? And a lot of times those are the matches where people are sitting there wondering, how did we just lose to those bronze players like that? Yeah, guess what, because they got a lucky kill at the start of the match and from there on were able to carry momentum and snowball the whole match because they kept carrying man advantage, because everybody kept staggering and headlessly running into disadvantageous fights. If you enter a fight, yeah, get into the range of an enemy, you usually want to make sure that you do it together as a team, so you are in the attacking range of your teammates. But people are usually completely disconnected. Like, if you are taking damage when your teammates are not even in range to attack the enemies beating on you, you overextend it. That's just bad timing and bad positioning. It's horrible. How are they supposed to provide peeling for you? Think about it for a second. Start of the match, first team fight around the scroll, you get caught by somebody, they land a charge attack on you, put you in a combo. What do you do? 90% of the time, people will sub immediately. Why? There is no reason to. That enemy that is beating on you is held in place by his own combo. He is a vulnerable target for your teammate. How about you just save that sub, take those two or three hits and let your teammate attack that enemy. Now you still have your sub and the enemy already lost one. See what I mean? It almost feels like most people have no awareness at all and just react to whatever happens on the screen right in front of them paired with really bad camera work. And then you have a couple of people that are not completely brain dead, that organize in groups, that didn't really have proper training, but have developed a little bit of routine in what they are doing, because they keep doing the same shit that works best for them, which is not a good long-term strategy actually, because it is a very one-sided load first of all, and it's also part of the biggest mistake they are doing that's holding them back, because they play result-oriented, not process-oriented. They think, okay, what gives me the highest possible chance to win this one match at my current state where I'm currently at? So they play what works best, instead of going out there and trying to make things work. You are not getting better at something by just straight up avoiding it. There are gonna be competences that you don't train, there are gonna be things that will catch you off guard because you don't know them well enough, etc, etc. I know that at some point in the future I will do an extra video on process-oriented gameplay, how to do it right and everything, but for now, just let me put it like that. You don't just play that one match. Over the course of your Shinobi Striker career, you will play a whole bunch of games. And the rules to win a whole bunch of games are not the same as the rules to win one game. Like, yeah, you can go out with a big ego and feel special and bend the rules, cut corners, cheese everything, exhaust everyone tryharding and win the game and then lose the next three, but that's a stupid medium to long term strategy. Your team gets nothing out of it if you go out there as an attack type and farm some beginners with Kurama Claw heavy spam and go 10-0 in a combat battle because they'll hardly get any chance to develop. You should organize your team in a way that the best players lead, but everybody gets a chance to actually put some work in and improve, and play the medium to long term game in a fair and decent way. One of the things that I as a coach pay attention to when scouting a player for a team is actually what happens when he gets a kill. What happens when he gets a win? And usually if they are celebrating themselves in sort of an egotistical way and are just feeding their ego, that's really not a good sign. But if you have a player who carried a match or won a fight, got a nice old in, a clean kill or whatever, and the whole team around him is celebrating that win, is euphoric or talking about how great he did or are happy about the part they could play in that, that's how I know that guy is a real athlete. Because not only can he get the job done, but he gets it done in a way that benefits the entire team. That's the person I would go with in the long run 100,000%. Because in the end the goal is not just getting a kill or winning a single fight or game. The goal is to win as many times as possible while simultaneously benefiting as many of your teammates as you can. Learning should be the number one goal. Learn how to handle losing, learn how to handle victory and also just learn from the experience itself. If you do a mistake, well, everybody will do mistakes anyways, nobody is perfect, but identifying it as such and accepting that 
will just allow you to work towards making less of those mistakes in the future. That's why we just see them as a learning experience. They mean nothing less than straight up potential. You should rather celebrate as a team if you recognize a mistake. Yet I see people time and time again blame each other, attack each other verbally, make excuses, blame things around them that are not in their control, that they don't have any influence on. In the end, if you play stupidly, cheese everything, don't have to think, make it easy for yourself and you win just because you got lucky. That's by far not as good as playing intelligently, doing your best, expanding your skills and losing because the other team was better and then you can analyze and learn from the fact that they had solutions for all the problems you presented them. So while you are playing, your main goal should be expanding your skills as much as possible so you get better at winning the next game. But you can't quite do that if you are taking all that away from your enemies, looking down on them, putting yourself on a pedestal, blaming everyone but yourself and making all sorts of excuses just because you have a fragile ego. But yeah, to get back to the topic, those tryhards have a really distorted self-image. Because they have all these winning experiences in an environment that hardly offers any real competition for someone that has the tiniest bit of common sense and coordination as a team, and cheese everything and polish their stats up to a 95% win rate and a 20 KD, spending 15 minutes to get a four stake organized to maximize their chances of winning and make everything as easy and convenient as possible rather than just going out there and playing a couple games solo. You can basically tell, when somebody has stats like that, what they usually do in-game has nothing to do with playing a game. They are just jerking off. Why would you need to pull some sweaty meta build against some bronze player as a seasoned veteran? Why would you go out there and teabag people online and celebrate yourself like that and try to make fun of complete strangers on the internet? Because you have a fragile ego that you need a feed so you won't be buried underneath it when it starts to collapse. What you usually want to do if you want to improve or perform, it doesn't matter, is enter a flow state. I will also do another video on that topic as well someday in the future. But for now, just think of Ultra Instinct from Dragon Ball for example. Or The Zone from Kuroko no Basket. Both of these are actually based of a real scientifically proven state that somebody can enter when he is fully immersed in a task and can maximize his concentration and performance effortlessly. There are a couple of ways how you can harness flow easily and how you can improve at accessing flow state at will, but one factor that really helps with that is presenting yourself with a challenge that exceeds your current abilities, but where you still have a fair chance to get the task done. The challenge should be round about 4% higher than your current skill level. Yeah, and then you look at what these 4 stacks of plat players are doing online the whole time. And it's exactly those little wannabe pros that always want to have some kind of weird discussions with me in YouTube comments. That base their opinions on individual experiences they themselves made in that kind of environment, where they are kind of the one-eyed amongst the blinds, and want to tell me what works in the game and what not, Bruh, I damn well know my stuff. You can't just make up some dumb shit and claim things that are simply not true and then expect me to kiss your ass and say I just can't take criticism or anything. It has nothing to do with criticism if you are just wrong and don't know what you're talking about. It's called having a whole lot of opinion for that little actual knowledge to back that up. You're falling victim to the Dunning-Kruger effect without realizing and I don't need your approval or validation. I don't know every single detail about every single mechanic in Shinobi Striker specifically because I just don't have to. I could coach a chess team without even knowing the rules of chess, okay? Because after all, I don't need to show a chess player how to play chess. It's a chess player. They know how to play chess. What I need to do as a coach is help him getting better at chess. And the process of learning and getting better at something is the same. Obviously, there are always going to be uh, specific factors that have to be taken into consideration, but in the end, the same principles will apply. Shinobi Striker is also not a game that is super competitive. It is very competitive for what it is, for its size and everything, and that's partially thanks to people like Fleaboy Jetson or Zaremga, aka Paris Frosty, but 
In the end, we have no pro scene or anything. We just have a fan-made amateur league that is pretty cool for what it is, but it's just a numbers thing. It just isn't as competitive and Shinobi Striker also just doesn't take as much skill as a lot of other games. The top people participating in there are far from the kind of competitive base level you have in other disciplines. You could hear their voice channels on stream in big finals that were supposed to determine the strongest clans in the world or something, and a lot of valuable information wasn't shared, voice channels were blocked with emotional reactions and trash talk, people were blaming each other in between games instead of using the time to adjust the tactic or do certain breathing techniques to regulate their nervous system for example, it was a mess. People in this community barely even know what a scrim is. They use that term all the time, but for me as a coach it kind of feels weird because they rarely use it, right? Um, they are calling things scrims that hardly have anything to do with scrims. They don't seem to know how to scrim properly. I mean, in the end, language is just code. They all know what they are referring to when they say scrim in the Shinobi Striker bubble. So there is really nothing wrong with that. Please don't get me wrong here and to be fair, I also don't see most of what they do behind the scenes. Neither did I watch a whole lot of games or scrims. So yeah, that might not apply to everybody. That's just from what I have seen over the last five years. That's just my impression. But if I'm not mistaken, they have kind of like a rank system or something, or at least uh, they somewhat seem to count scrims or whatever. And listen, it is basically in the definition of a scrim that it is an unranked match. There are no points or whatever. You don't count them like that. It's literally a training method and tool in the training schedule that can be done in multiple ways in order to achieve different training goals or to manage performance ups and downs a lot of times but not always in preparation for a certain event. You can scrim in various ways to reach various training goals. You can target train certain competences, scenarios or matchups, just use them to stay in shape, prepare for a certain opponent or event, competition training to learn how to deal with the pressure and everything that a big event comes with, or to just put to the test what you've been working on in training under real conditions, test new tactics, etc. From what I have seen, they usually call it a scrim whenever two teams team up against each other. They also been doing that for their egos as well from what I've seen on Facebook. Everything far from what a scrim is actually supposed to be. You want to do scrims in a certain manner. Work with them in the right way and integrate them into the training schedule properly to maximize the progress and insight you get out of it. And I don't really think they do that quite right. Well, who knows, I don't see it, so in the end they could do anything with it, but from what I've seen it doesn't look like they have ever seen a proper scrim or really know what that actually is. And I really don't mean that as an attack or anything. I was just bringing up some examples to make clear in what kind of context people are getting their individual experiences they base their opinions on. And the people trying to have these discussions with me are also not the comp players I guess. I'm just saying at best that's the pinnacle of what they know when it comes to competitive gameplay for a game like Shinobi Striker. Now I on the other hand don't even understand why I would base a general statement about the game element on some casuals or amateur players individual player experience when I literally studied that shit and a lot of it is not an opinion type of thing. There are also just things that are factually true or not and if you would have enough data and proper statistics on relevant check marks for the topics of these situations you could actually with the use of a hyper geometrical calculator that you can easily access for free in your browser by the way, calculate probabilities for certain scenarios and scientifically prove some of these things and form action tendencies in theory training that are partially also based on these results or that take them into consideration. But since we don't have that kind of data when it comes to Shinobi Striker, people are just gonna come up with things like but everybody is doing this or that and I'm like yeah, and? Why would I care what most people do? Most people can barely play the game. Most people online are not good at the game at all. Which is fine. They are just here because they want to make their own Naruto character. Outside of that, they wouldn't really play a game like that. But a lot of them are not even utilizing 
or are aware of base game mechanics like L2 dodging through attacks. Literally every Dark Souls player would be better at that. So no offense, but why would I care what they do? But again, those are the kind of people that want to sound smart and talk out of their ass in my YouTube comments. I mean, I shouldn't be bothered by it. 99% of my comments are positive or genuine criticism, which I truly appreciate. But some people are really aggravating and you will get nowhere with just logic alone when it comes to those. Literally every creator knows these kind of people. I think it's just part of it in the end. I just hope this video kind of reduces the amount of people trying to tell me that shit would not work just because they can pull it off because they apparently managed to be even worse than me at this game. Imagine, people are low-key telling me stupid shit like Oh yeah, easy to do if the enemy doesn't move Or This would never hit in a real game, this is not gonna work online And you know what they are talking about? I did a short where I just wanted to show the umbrella drones with the dog as a combo starter So you summon the drones, then the dog, get into the fight like that And when you hit somebody with the dog, the drones will hold them in place Easy and simple little startup And then in the short I just show the light heavy combo reset with the new Totsuka blade, combo into limbo clones, follow up on it and finish with mind transfer. Simple enough. You could have used anything, it doesn't matter, it was not the point of the video, but the thing is, the guy in the video was standing still because when we were testing the dogs and the new weapon we just recorded some clips right away that I can use to demonstrate some of the stuff we came up with and give you guys some tips. Why would I need to go out there and record an hour of footage with every simple little thing for a little short where I just show one thing one time real quick and it totally gets the point across? Like, it's not a gameplay type of video. I have enough of these recorded, as I said, it's getting close to 3 terabytes now. I'm just not getting stuff out fast enough. That's why it makes sense to just record it like that real quick. Him not moving in the video doesn't mean you can't hit it on a moving target, like, what the fuck? You're not even able to get a hit in with the dog that basically kinda works like Spike Boulder, so you can't even hit something simple like that, yet you wanna sound smart and talk out of your ass and try to school a professional esports coach about what will work in a real situation and what not? Are you stupid? You must be completely delusional. Like, if I can easily do it consistently, and am not even a particularly good player? Who are you even kidding saying it wouldn't be possible? Like, I be doing way crazier stuff than that on a daily basis. Like, I'm putting people into one-shot combos with Boruto Stream, Paper Bombs and Earth Bullet Dragon all together in one combo. I hit freely aimed mud wall traps on people in Sage Mode and one-shot them with Indra's arrow. I be comboing into glimmering flames and use the airstrike of Shurado and then hit the single rocket at the same time for one shot. I be comboing people into Shugaku ult. And those are the easy things, okay? As I said, the game is not that hard. Look at people playing a weapon for literally months and not knowing a single combo and then just spam triangle. It's not Street Fighter where you have to type in a whole encyclopedia to just move one limb and where you have 3 million combos for every character. You literally just have two buttons you do the combos with. Then two more for Jutsus, maybe a ninja tool or a little cancel here and there with R2, L2 or X. And that's the whole story <laughs> when it comes to combos. You low-key just have a handful of combo strings per weapon and they are really short. Still people running around not knowing their combos. And those are the kind of people that are trying to argue with me about what you can hit online and whatnot. Are you fucking kidding me? 98% of players online can't do shit and still y'all are complaining and whining about every single bit, blaming everything and everybody but yourself, calling the game and other players trash yet you seem to like it enough to go out there and watch content on it. It's literally just you being frustrated by having a bad experience, but then not having the mindset that would allow you to get better and have a better experience, which actually wouldn't be that hard. And also, when I show some long as elaborated combo that has no sublocks or anything, yeah, most of the time people will sub out before you can complete that. But then again, you're not supposed to take the combo as it is and try to blindly do it exactly the way I did in the video all the time, no matter the situation. Like, 
there are situations where you can hit this so it's useful to know how to do them to be able to finish in those scenarios instead of dropping the combos and giving the opponent a second chance but it might require an isolated enemy so you won't get interrupted or them having a long sub cooldown or wear an outfit like black crane or the blue flash bottom that blocks their sub having a teammate that has something like super heavy boulder that lengthens sub cooldown or can block or empty sub for you mid combo with something like a quick little obo drop for example paralysis jutsu or a wind release bullet or whatever but in the end i'm just showing different connecting points giving you guys some ideas and style a bit you will have to think a bit for yourself okay i can't play the game for you you always need to adjust to the given situation it's always about assessing the situation right knowing your window and filling it with the highest possible damage potential. And your window is usually gonna be the time from your starting point of a combo until your enemy will get their sub back or you would get interrupted by their teammates or until the combo counter would be full. Those are factors that are always gonna be unique to the given situation. But to be able to tell it requires a little bit of awareness and macro management. You need to stay aware of your surroundings and what other players are up to and keep track of people's sub cooldown keep track of the combo counter in the background and also just be able to create these openings which is very much possible although some of these guys in the comments might think it's not but not gonna lie stop complaining and trying to school me and just sit down shut your mouth and learn something goddamn shit's been getting ridiculous i'm also gonna drop a little compilation of all my past shinobi got talent entries and bonus clips to double down on this video and give you a little bit of an idea and then there's also like 20 minutes of footage that I actually got for Basimus because he asked me to get some clips with the earth release bullet for a video since he didn't have that item. So I made him a little selection, sat down and played a couple hours, pre-trimmed everything and in the end he just needed a handful of clips of it for his video. He will probably be able to link his video somewhere down below in the comments. Let me know what your favorite build was today and also leave that man Basimus a like and a follow. I know he has a strong accent, but he's actually trying to improve his English right now and he really does dope content, not gonna lie. A lot of cool things that this man found out about this game. Definitely worth checking out. This wasn't really an actual video, just me getting some stuff off my chest. I didn't edit anything, just put some gameplay underneath it, but I hope it was somewhat of an enjoyable experience. And thank you for sticking around until the end. Wow. <laughs> I really didn't expect you to make it this far, that's pretty cool. You're really one of the few ones, I guess. I genuinely appreciate that. Thank you for your time. And peace out, and never forget, if it has a health bar, it has to die. <laughs>